Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. What we're going to be talking about today is one way to manage our alarms. It is common within these systems if, uh, depending on how they are set up, we can get some nuisance alarms. This is an example of uh, basically a nuisance alarm. It's one that we don't necessarily need to receive at the moment since this air handler is of course unoccupied we are receiving an alarm of a high discharge temperature handling this alarm is quite simple there are many tools uh, within Metis's extender architecture that will allow us to uh, deal with this the one we're going to be using today is known as the auto shutdown the first step that I want to do is create a folder inside our building uh, supervisory device. So I'm going to highlight the device that I want to place the folder in. I'm then going to insert and then select a folder. And of course this is going to give me my destination window, which I already have the location highlighted over here so it automatically highlighted it for me here when I press next it will give me the ability to name the folder and what I'm going to name this folder is alarm shutdown creating folders and naming them correctly is a great way to help keep your system organized. It also makes troubleshooting much easier. This is just a review screen where I have the name of my folder. I could put a description in here if I would like. I can put it into various categories uh, if I like, but I'm just going to leave it as general for now. I'm going to click Next. This is the final summary screen. Once I'm at this point here, I'm going to hit finish. And now, as you can see, our folder is created. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go up to the insert option again. I want to insert an object. This is going to open up my object window. And I need to select an auto shutdown. Now that I have that selected, I'm going to hit next. And it's going to ask me once again for my destination, where I would like to put it, which the folder is already highlighted since I have selected it over here. So I'm simply going to hit next. From this screen, I can name it, and uh, I can name this particular shutdown. And what it is for this unit, I'm going to name it Air Handler 1 Discharge Temp. Now then, I hit next. In here, I have my configuration window. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to make it easier to work with. I have to highlight the point I wish this to that I want to use to control this shutdown. This is highlighted in red, and the system will not allow me to proceed until I put data into this point. Now I'm going to press this gray box and it's going to bring up my selection window. What I want controlling this point is the air handler occupancy. If the air handler is unoccupied I do not want to receive a, an alarm on the discharge temperature. So I'm simply going to scroll down to my building device
which as you can see we have quite a few. I'm then going to drop down the trunk for which the device is located in. And it takes just a moment. We have quite a few devices on our system as you can obviously see. Okay. Here's our system command point. I'm going to select that. And when I press OK, I have that object selected in this window from this page as well. I can select the, the particular point I want it to control. And what I want this device or this shutdown to control is the discharge temperature alarm. which is right here. Once I have that selected, I simply press OK. I can add multiple alarms in this window here. If I wanted to turn off more than one alarm for this uh, particular device using that control point, I select OK. I will then hit Next. And then on my final summary screen, as you can see, I will simply hit finish. Now then, I have the option here of adding a trend or totalization, which I'm not going to do any of that to this. And I have uh, just hit the finish screen. Now as you can see here, I no longer have an alarm showing on the discharge air temperature. If this air handler was occupied, however, and that discharge temperature was that high, it would give us the alarm. Since we are unoccupied, the auto shutdown turns off the alarm. Within our alarm shutdown, we have the option of adding a delay. This way, uh, when our system comes occupied, we will have a time period to allow the system to reach normal operation before it will flag an alarm. For this particular alarm, we have a startup delay of five minutes. That means it is going to give the air handler five minutes to get the discharge temperature down to set point before it actually re-enables the alarm. If the temperature set point does not get below the alarm threshold within that time period, an alarm will be flagged, indicating that, the, uh, that there may be an issue with the air handler. If we look to the uh, alarm configuration itself within the system, we can see exactly how uh, useful these can be. We see some other very unique features that uh, will let us manage the alarms as well. If we have a situation where a supply fan status has an alarm configured, one of the ways to eliminate unnecessarily unnecessary alarms is to link the alarm to the command point. That is another way to end the nuisance alarms that we can receive within our system. There's no need to get an alarm about, a, about the status of a fan being off if the command itself is off. Inside the alarm, particularly the binary alarms, we do have a command reference where we can link the alarm to the command point and the alarm will follow the condition of the command point. If it, the fan is commanded on and the status of the device is still off, it will flag an alarm. However, 
If the status is on, it will flag, it will not flag an alarm, excuse me. Also, if someone were to put this device in hand where the status would be on when we have a command of off, we would get an alarm. You also have the option of adding a delay in these alarms as well. That way, if you are getting a, uh, a blink in your system where it's just flagging an alarm and immediately going back out, or if you have a, an input on such as a pump coming from a pressure switch or a flow switch and you need just a little bit of a delay before that input is made uh, before it would flag an alarm you can add a report delay in the case for this fan we have a delay of 10 seconds uh, that gives plenty of time to receive a status back into the system before it will actually flag an alarm for more information on uh, the configuration of the various alarms within Metasys, visit my blog at systemcontroltech.com.